Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. This is part two of lesson 4.6. Two objectives for this video. We are going to sketch graphs of secant functions and we're going to sketch graphs of cosecant functions. Just as a quick reminder, remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine and secant is reciprocal of the cosine. And we're actually going to use those ideas later on when we graph these things out. Looking at a few characteristics of a cosecant graph, we can see that the period of our graph is 2 pi. That's how long it's going to take for this to repeat itself. Taking a look at the range or the y values for the graph, they're going to run from negative infinity up to negative 1, but then there's a break between negative 1 and positive 1, and then our graph heads from 1 up to infinity. And we can see that kind of represented in the graph. There's nothing in between these two curves. There are a couple of vertical asymptotes shown on the graph. Those things are going to happen at multiples of pi because the domain is the x values that are not equal to those multiples of pi. So like at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, we would have a vertical asymptote. So in this first example, we're going to graph out y equals 2 cosecant of x plus pi over 2. Now we know that cosecant is related to sine, so I'm actually going to pretend that this equation says sine in it. We're going to graph out a sine equation first. So instead of cosecant, just pretend this says 2 sine of x plus pi over 2, and we're going to approach it that way. So running through all of our stuff, the amplitude, we look at the absolute value of the number out in front, that's going to be 2. There's not a vertical shift on this one. So I'm going to put a dotted line at positive 2 and down at negative 2 as my guidelines. Next thing we're looking at is the period. So we go with 2 pi divided by our b value, while well, the number in front of our x is 1. So we've got a period of just 2 pi. And remember, we take that period and split it into four parts so that we can find the spacing on our ordered pairs. And that's going to end up being pi over 2. As far as the left end point, we would take this stuff inside of parentheses and set it equal to 0. We would end up subtracting this pi over 2 to the right hand side. So we're going to start at x equals negative pi over 2. As far as our end point, we would take this stuff inside of parentheses and set it equal to 2 pi. We would end up solving that one to get x equals 5 pi over 2. And then I'm going to start building these ordered pairs. We said we were first going to plug in negative pi over 2. Well, let's just plug that into our equation. Negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. So at negative pi over 2, let's say that's right here, we are at 0. To figure out our next x value, we take this negative pi over 2. We add on the pi over 2 from earlier, and we get 0 as that x value. Well, plug in 0, we get 0 plus pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So at 0, we're up at 2 right there. Then our next x value, we're going to add that pi over 2 again. So pi over 2, and plug it in. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is just pi. Sine of pi is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So at pi over 2, we're back down to 0. Add on pi over 2 again for our next x value, we're going to end up getting pi. Pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 times our 2 gives us negative 2. So at pi, we're down at negative 2. And then we'll need one more x value. So I'm going to take pi plus pi over 2 and get 3 pi over 2. Plug that in. 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which is the same thing as 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So here at 2 pi, we're back at 0. And then I'm going to connect these to make my sine curve. Now we're not quite done with this one because we said we wanted to originally graph out a cosecant. So we're going to have to make some changes to this graph. I'm going to erase these ordered pairs so I have a little bit more room to work on here. The first change we're going to make on our graph is everywhere we have a zero, so everywhere our graph is crossing the x-axis, we need a vertical asymptote. So we've got one there at negative pi over 2, we've got one right here at pi over 2, and we've got another one at 3 pi over 2. Now if we look at what those asymptotes did to our graph, it's split it into a couple of parts. What I'm going to do with each part 
is take that individual portion of the graph. Like if we look at this one, looks kind of like an upside down parabola shape. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, meaning that we're gonna flip those fractions over. So what I'm gonna do with this portion of the graph is just flip it over. So instead of heading down, this piece is gonna head up. Likewise, with this one over here, we have more of a normal parabola shape, but we need to reciprocal or flip it over. So the green graph actually represents this cosecant graph. Next one we're gonna graph out is a secant graph, and there's a lot of similarities between the secant and the cosecant. We've got a period of two pi again. The range goes from negative infinity to one, and from one out to infinity. There are some vertical asymptotes. This time they're happening at x equals pi over two plus n pi, because again, we're gonna run into domain issues there. So on this picture, it's like pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, so on and so forth. Last example for this video, we're gonna sketch out the graph for y equals the secant of two x. In order to do this one, we're gonna treat it similar to the way we did the last one, except instead of looking at a secant, we're gonna pretend that says cosine instead. So I'm gonna run through all this stuff. Amplitude is the number out in front, that's one. So we've got a dotted line between one and negative one. Our period, we're gonna take two pi and divide it by our b value. So we've got pi as our period, but then remember we need to split that into four parts. So our spacing is gonna be pi over four. For our left end point, we're gonna take this stuff inside of parentheses there, our two x, set it equal to zero. We're just gonna get x equals zero. For our right end point, we grab that stuff inside of parentheses again, this time set it equal to two pi. Well, if we divide both sides by two, we get an end point of pi. So if we look at those ordered pairs, first x value that we're gonna look at is zero, since that's our starting point. Two times zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. So at zero, we are up at one. Now our spacing is pi over four, so I'm gonna make that my next x value. 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we'll go right there. Add on pi over 4 again, and we get pi over 2. 2 times pi over 2 is pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So at pi over 2, we're down at negative 1. Add on pi over 4 again, we get 3 pi over 4. 2 times 3 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. And then I guess we'll need to extend our line out a little bit more. Uh, next x value, if we had pi over four again, we're gonna get just pi. Two times pi is two pi. Cosine of two pi is one. So we're up here at one. And then I'm gonna draw in this cosine curve. Now, just like we did on the last one, where we have these x intercepts, I'm gonna put a vertical asymptote and then we need to flip over each individual portion of our graph. So this is like the right-hand side of a downwards parabola. So I'm gonna flip that over and make it the right-hand side of an upwards parabola. This parabola kind of shape in the middle here looks upwards, so we flip that over, make it a downward-facing parabola. Over here on the far right-hand side, we've got this left-hand portion of a down parabola. So we're gonna flip that over to make it the left-hand portion of an up parabola. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.